Welcome back. When we last left off, I had just finished the monumental task of obtaining a single bucket of lava for my smeltery. A smeltery that, notably, we do not have yet. It's time to fix that. Smelteries require only three ingredients, clay dust, gravel, and sand. Previously, I had to rely on dirt and gravel creepers to provide the materials to make those, but now that I have lava, I can finally indulge in the most quintessential of skyblock experiences, cobblestone farming. Interestingly enough, with my lava problem solved, I have officially obtained every item you can start with in vanilla skyblock. Neat. Gravel gets turned into sand in a crucible, and with another whack of gravel turned into clay, some crafting, and some smelting, I end up with heaping scads of smeltery brick. Lava consumption does not scale with smeltery size or smelting capacity, so in order to be efficient with my lava usage, I'm going to want to make the biggest smeltery possible and smelt everything all at once. I have plenty of lava, but smeltery stuff is cheap for me right now, so I decide to splurge a little bit and reap some of that advantage. Once that is built, I cycle through a backlog of smelting resources. All of my aluminum ore berries up to this point net me enough resources to make 10 aluminum blobs that I can macerate into dust and 6 aluminum brass. The macerated aluminum will be turned into alumite using the more efficient Gregtech recipe and then re-smelted for my tool forge later. The most important part of this process though is making a ball mold, which I hammer out without any issues. Now, finally, we are ready to make some circuits and push our way, kicking and screaming, into the age of low voltage. This is going to be something of a stutter step process, because LV machines tend to unlock vastly cheaper recipes for basically everything, and I will want to take advantage of those before making more LV machines. The first step, however, is storage. I am drowning in junk right now, and I need somewhere to clear my inventory into. The second step is harvesting and collecting all of my passive production stuff. The emerald situation is kind of ridiculous at this point, and I love it. I plan on making a massive swimming pool with signs, and a collection area underneath that I can then just throw thousands of villagers into later on, and it's gonna be great. The third step is milking my peck dry of its copper reserves. A good rule of thumb for me to assume is that every LV circuit needs half a stack of copper ingots to make, and I am going to need three of those before I can do anything interesting. This has the end result of filling up my inventory with all sorts of stuff. Pecs can pull from dungeon chest loot, and emeralds are worth so much that they can basically give you anything that a peck can possibly drop. I end up with a chest full of random tools, dungeon loot, and record discs from this, but also get 29 native copper, which should hopefully be enough for now. While that's processing, I start consolidating all of my materials again, and making all of the microcrafts that I can. It looks super messy in the video, and it is, but just trust me when I say that it is more manageable than it looks. I also grow a brain and automate my smeltery with a bit of piping as a reservoir and a hopper. Steel takes forever to cast, and I don't want to have to hover over the thing all the time. A large part of the steel for this project is coming from all the chain armor that I've been macerating, and that needs to be processed. My first major crafting is the six vacuum tubes needed for the circuits. These suckers need half a stack of copper on their own and they are only one part of the process. While all that is going on, I farm out sulfur for rubber and start thinking about where I want my more permanent production area to be situated. I decide that I want to use a 2x2 two two chunk area next to the mob farm for now and get started with flooring and roofing. Electrical machines will explode if they run while uncovered and they're in the rain, and I'm going to want a more centralized production area soon, regardless. The mob farm is probably going to be deconstructed and moved later. 
Uh, this thing was built before I entered the Stone Age, and it is well and truly out of date by this stage of the game. This also marks the point where I'm going to start respecting chunk borders a little bit more. Multi-blocks really don't like chunk edges, and even though everything should be rendered all the time anyway, it does not hurt to be careful. This much space might seem a little excessive right now, but trust me, it will get used. We join right back in as the rubber is finished processing. Rather than count out exactly how much I needed, I just sort of make a stack and was planning on seeing how far I could get with it. I know I will need 30 bars for the circuit boards, and I don't think this will be enough for my wiring, but we will see. I've also finished making my giant blank platform, and you can see that mess off in the distance. I'm going to need to do a whole mess of upgrades to my energy production later that will mess up this nice clean build, but for now it looks better than anything else on my island, at least. Wire making, and by association plate production, is a very expensive process right now. I am able to process enough materials to make my motors, but circuits will need some more time. I do, however, have almost everything I need for resistors, which are by far the easiest component to craft currently. Until I break my wire cutters on them. After dealing with that whole debacle, I am now six resistors richer and that much closer to circuitry. While prepping the red alloy for wires, I realize I am exactly four rubber ingots short of my goal and deal with that in my downtime and then immediately realize after that that I was actually six bars over what I needed. I continue to be unable to do basic arithmetic. I also realize that I have another problem. Shock of all shocks, I'm short on copper. This is going to become a theme for this episode. This is solved with a high-speed meltdown of some spare ore berries. They actually made a difference, go figure followed by an even higher speed meltdown of my flesh when I accidentally touch a pipe containing molten steel. Ouchies. And that's circuits. We are getting closer. A little bit of hammering later, and I have a bunch of plates. I fashion those into machine casings and then try to fashion those into the two machines that I need to make the most. A steam turbine for power production, and a wire mill for wire production, which was previously the most wasteful process of everything that I'm doing. I say try, because I forgot my bronze pipes were being used to automate steel production, so I will have to wait a bit until those are done. That's actually fine though, because it gives me time to address another elephant in the room. I need more steam, I need it more reliably, and LV steam generators consume about 1500 millibuckets a second. My dinky little boiler setup right now combined makes maybe a sixth of that, and that is nowhere near enough to sustain an electric machine running at full tilt. I could just make a better boiler, which is what you're supposed to do, but I'm going to do something different. I want high pressure solar boilers. These things are stupidly overpowered. Normally, silver is pretty difficult to come across before hitting the twilight forest, and by that point your energy production is pretty much solved, so I suspect that they just tend to be ignored when they do balance passes. Uh, I have no such concerns, however, because I'm sitting on stacks of silver that I have no use for, and simply do not have the resources that I normally would use to generate all of my power. The boilers here have a huge heat capacity, which is enough to last through a full Minecraft night without any issues, and their maintenance needs are practically non-existent. There is a calcification mechanic that begins to reduce their power output after they run a while, but that can be reset by breaking and replacing them, and it takes a literal real-life day of playtime before you see any nerf because of this whatsoever. They also don't cost copper to make. They're supposed to be more expensive, so they cost steel instead. They are perfect. I also craft myself some more water barrels. I'm not quite certain how much water these things are going to need, but I figure with two barrels extra I should be able to tell if I'm running low long before the boilers explode. I even splurge on some larger wooden pipes to run water to the boilers. That said, with the amount of rain I keep getting, maybe water isn't something I should be concerned about. I install the rain barrels on the roof of my new production area. They need to see the sky to function, but there's no reason that I can't pipe the water down to keep them from clogging up my life more than necessary. 
In shockingly little time, I get my five solar boilers crafted and installed. I don't have enough water saved up in the new system to run them all yet, but once I do, that will be my steam problem solved for a good long while. With my permanent power system mostly set up, it is now time for some serious home renovation. I have had it with this place. My storage system is a disaster. I have nowhere to store new items. I am constantly being ganked by sentient toilet mold. My floor is covered with human skulls, and I am sick and tired of tripping over random machines, creeper holes, crop farms, and junk that I have left around for the past five episodes. Seriously. I still even have that old spot where I blew up gravel creepers. I never bothered getting rid of it. This first step is, of course, storage, by which I mean sorting. Anything left after that debacle that I don't feel like dealing with gets crammed into random junk chests for me to sift through later. I have things I want to do today, and none of them involve inventory management. The old steam system gets moved and merged into the new one. I still need all of this stuff and will be using it for quite a while. The tank can just go up on the roof with the rest of them. And the final piece of the puzzle is complete. Welcome to LV, everyone. The lights are on. Of course, saying that conceals the reality of the situation. We may be able to stably produce power, but my copper reserves are utterly and completely spent. I do not have a single ingot of the stuff to my name, and am fairly low on anything I could trade with a peck. I do a couple of things to try and solve this problem. The first is a bit of a weird one. I start wire milling all of my gold ingots. Gold ingots have two lucrum, which is the aspect that the pecs care about, each. And each ingot can be turned into two wires with one lucrum each, making it a fairly lossless process. The trades that we care about are going to be basically unaffected by this difference since we want the lowest tier of items. This trick lets me effectively double the amount of stuff that I care about getting from gold trades. The second thing is, of course, upgrading my macerator. High-speed steam macerators run at twice the rate of the basic ones, but consume more steam. Steam is not a problem anymore. I have a massive backlog of gold armor, golden apples, glistering melons, and random junk that I can crank through to salvage material from, and it is time to start doing that. I also go and raid the villagers again, of course. That right there nets me almost a stack of emerald, which have a chance for trading for golden apples, enchanted golden apples, or native gold clusters themselves, and help keep the chopper train chugging in the meantime. It won't make enough for serious expansion, but it is a decent start while I work on other projects. Like peck trading. So much peck trading. And also mob farm upgrades, for now at least. This thing has been languishing in obscurity ever since, like, episode 3, and it is time for that to change a little bit. Mostly, I just want to turn it into an XP farm because holy cow do I need me some XP. The solution to this problem is, of course, a golden spike. When mobs touch it, they die and drop experience. Easy peasy. Except that it's not really because you have to punch them before they die to it, so really this doesn't make my life much easier at all, but whatever. I harden up the farm with some of my spare planks, and you know, shockingly, dirt is not a structurally sound and reliable material to build with, and then pull the torches from it. It does exactly what you would expect, though a fair bit slower than I would have liked. Damaged mobs do weird things, and I do not want to risk accidents. So to help mitigate this, I put on one of the sharpness enchanted books that I grabbed from the infernal mobs. Enchantments on spikes basically act like they do on a sword. You just can't directly enchant the spike and have to use an anvil. That's not a problem here. I don't have an enchanting table. As before, this does exactly what you would expect, but faster. By slapping down my XP extraction setup and cramming myself into wool, I can basically just launder experience into sulfur. Provided that I pay no attention to the incredibly disturbing noises that I hear coming from the containment chamber. Uh, it should be totally safe, I promise. Maybe. I think. 
I do that for a little bit until I get bored and come away with a little under a stack of sulfur, which is about as much as I need to make my first couple machines. Hopefully this will be enough for my next project, which is a chemical reactor and a fluid solidifier. The reason for these machines in particular is simple. Rubber is my bottleneck right now. Even with upgraded XP collection methods, it still takes a while to make a reasonable amount of rubber, and these machines will multiply the amount of rubber that I can produce with one sulfur by a factor of 18. Yeah, we could use that. I eyeball recipes a bit, and decide that I need to go through another round of looting and trading before I'm confident that I will have enough copper, though. 18 emeralds isn't fantastic, but it is better than nothing. After finishing my trading and harvesting the ore berries that I've been growing in the cost breeder, I notice that someone has blown a hole in my mob farm. The farm is lit up right now, so this must have happened after I finished with my sulfur. Stupid creepers. Regardless, I'm sitting on about 90 ingots worth of copper and plenty of sulfur, which should be enough to proceed for now. Crafting anything new right now takes a huge amount of time. This is largely unavoidable at this stage of the game, but once I hit LB, a great deal of my work will involve bolt crafting basic components to hopefully mitigate this sort of micro-crafting-induced hell in the future. But hey, at least I only need something like 40 ingots of copper instead of the stack and a half that I blew for my first two machines. It's progress, right? A few minutes later, I finish up the crafting on my machines and install them onto the same cable as the wire mill. I will be reconfiguring the arrangement later, but for now we want as many machines as close as possible to the generator to minimize resistance losses. I did end up needing a little bit more sulfur than I had, but I just used random XP bottles to make up the difference because I did not feel like fixing the mob farm. As always, I then failed to do basic arithmetic and ended up with a couple extra, but that was absolutely a planned overage of sulfur to let me demonstrate my new setup. Totally planned, 100% intentional. For my next machine, I set my sights on a bender. This lets me make plates and foils much more cheaply and definitely is not an Avatar of Last Airbender reference. And through the magic of filmography, here it is! I really like these fast-forward skills, don't you? I wish I had those in my daily life. This sucker only cost me the equivalent of three copper blocks to make. Yay! By this point, I'm running low on a number of different resources, specifically, shockable shock, copper, and steel, so I have to stock up again. You already know the drill. Get up the villagers and the gold wire stash, do some high-stakes haggling with the resident copper vault, dig out some cobble, because eight furnaces simply is not enough to keep up with my smelting demands at this point, and we have definitely no additional work whatsoever, it's an assembling machine! And just in time, too, because I have a big project I want to get started on. A riddle for you. What starts with V and ends with, my fingers are falling off? That's right! It's a better emerald factory. This assembler lets me make a bunch of fun things. One of them is a golden lasso. It does this. I can pick up any passive mob and move it around. Wherever I want- whoopsies. It's fine, he was a clay trader and therefore unimportant. Another fun thing is signs. I bet I can have all kinds of fun with- oh my god, why? So. There's actually a method to my madness here, and I will be using at least some of those signs that I crafted. They are super cheap, so I just made a bunch and will throw away what I don't need, or more likely stick it in a dump chest and forget about it. In this version of Minecraft, water doesn't break signs, and items don't float. This means that if I suspend, oh, say, 400-ish villagers in a water pool balanced on signs, I can easily collect all of the spare change they drop when a big ol' water funnel underneath. Since they are going to mostly shove each other away if they're swimming, this should mean that mob cramming damage is at a minimum, which will let me throw in basically as many villagers as my computer can handle. Let's test that theory. 
Step one is making a giant water chute system, which is what you have been watching me do. Step two is figuring out how to get out of the villager pit. Step three is making more buckets, because otherwise this is going to take literal years to finish. Step four is making a plate of dirt to get a nice even layer of water deposited on. Or, well, some of a nice plate of dirt. I don't have that much dirt right now, but I can just do this part piecemeal so it's fine. Oh boy, I bet this isn't going to take forever. You know, that wasn't actually that bad. Let's do it again! Now, I just need to replace all this dirt with signs. And now, I could manually move every single villager. Or... I could just do that and let them move themselves. Why are they all going over to one co- ooh, whoopsies. The housing market in Skyblock is simply killer, apparently. I do end up having to make a few modifications. The villagers keep getting stuck in one of the emerald collection trenches, so I needed to raise it up a bit. But other than that, it worked basically as designed. I also get knocked out of the world and lose my tinker tools, again. Uh, the, the items just take too long to pick up once the grave is broken and they can fall in the void. But again, not really a big deal because I can just make more and I don't really care about having good tools at the moment. And finally, time for a real question. Who's ready for some cookies? I know I am. One, two, three... If you're wondering why I'm doing it this way, it is because the babies will drown themselves in the pool. Just like in real life, babies can't swim very well. I will come back to this in a little bit and shift all the villagers over and see how it's doing. And with that out of the way, look at my brand new emerald printer. I had to make some extra modifications to keep them from suffocating in the wall when the world was reloaded, but it should be okay for now. And now the real question, which of you would like to sell me coal? And after milking the villager dry of its coal reserves, we can just wait and the pool will resupply all of my emeralds for free. I love this new system. Anyway, back to machine crafting. That all took long enough that my smeltery was finally able to process enough steel for my next project, but I am shy on copper again. You know the drill. Just like that, a fluid extractor. Isn't she pretty? You don't really get a sense of it from the footage, but these things are steadily getting easier to make. All of my new machines make crafting cheaper, faster, and more convenient, and the effect snowballs with the more machines that I have. This one, for instance, lets me craft much cheaper vacuum tubes, which in turn mean even cheaper circuit boards. Next in line is a lathe. This enables lossless rod production and also lets me make crop sticks at a rate that most would consider to be clinically unhealthy. I, on the other hand, consider it very healthy because I wish to carpet the entire dimension in XP berry crops. In fact, let's do that now. Builder's wand, I choose you. Uh, mm, mm, never mind. That's a slime chunk. Let's maybe do this somewhere else. For entirely unrelated reasons, I think instead that this looks like a lovely spot to put a water feature in. It totally isn't because the idea of infernal mobs, in close proximity to my extremely flammable and extremely expensive machines, scares the living doo-doo out of me right now. I get some farms set up in their new location, right next to my fancy spot I, I mean water feature. The XP berries haven't grown up yet, but I will be ready for them once they have. Unfortunately, before I can finish my grand design, tragedy strikes. I am out of dirt! Oh no, whatever shall I do? Now, what was I doing? Oh right, more farming. As with everything I do in this pack, I am of the opinion that less is more should only apply to the frame rate, so I stack another couple layers on the farm. 
While I was working on that project, I had my machines going on in the background, and vacuum tombs go wee. Another couple problems are looming on the horizon, though. The first is that I have pretty much tapped my reserve of steel at this point. I have enough for another couple of machines, but after that I will need more, and a lot of it. This does let me move my smeltery somewhere more convenient though, so silver lining. The second problem is that I need a cutting machine. Cutting machines need cobalt brass gears to make the cutting heads out of, and that little beauty is going to need several hundred buckets of XP to make. Let's hope those berries grow up quick, huh? Before we worry about that, though, centrifuge. It goes It also, finally, FINALLY, gives me an option for sulfur production that isn't milking my experience into a bucket. You all remember that cinnabar that I keep getting from peck trades? Yeah. I can now split it down into its component parts, which just so happen to be 50% sulfur. I have now gone from basically zero rubber production to having all of the rubber production I will need for the next two tech tiers. The steel problem will mostly solve itself with some new technology unlocked with a cutting machine, and XP production is going to be a case of wait and see, so I decide to take the time to rest, resupply, and just in general do useful stuff. One of those useful things is trying to get a snow farm set up. I have snowballs from the snowbell crops that I grew all the way back in the Stone Age. It's really amazing that they haven't melted yet, honestly. And with a compressor, I can make some snow blocks. It doesn't do anything. I am in a plains biome, and forgot how snow golems work. I move it over to the enchanted forest, and that works just fine. Go figure. This snow is going to be turned into 80 blocks, which I will then put under my nether wart farm to turn it into terra wart. It's kind of a weird mechanic, but sure, why not? I hit up my peck, of course, because why wouldn't I? I'm sitting on a ridiculous amount of tradables at the moment, and rake in a healthy haul. Also, villagers keep escaping, and I don't know why! Oh well. If nothing else, they liven the place up a bit. Yeah, it's also time to harvest the XP berries! Mmm, monster juice! My favorite flavor! Then I immediately turn around and plant them right back down on my new farm, so I don't get to eat any of them! That's fine though, I have plenty of other things I can do. Like make more circuits. And do weird things with villagers. There are all sorts of strange hidden trades if you're willing to go deep enough into the trees. Case in point, I can trade a minecart for seven emeralds. And I can make a polarizer, which I then immediately use to make half a stack of motors. I debated whether or not I should make a rock breaker for cobblestone production. In the end, I decided not to. Having lava in my base right now might start fires, which would blow up machines, and that would be bad. I instead go with a different and definitely not more ridiculous method. If you've been paying attention, you'll have noticed that in my forager pecs cage, there is a little green thing. That is a witchery hobgoblin. They do a couple of interesting things, but the one I care about most right now is they have a mechanic that lets you turn them into NPC miners. And before you ask, yes, I know that block breakers are a thing, but they need diamond plates, which needs a block cutter, and this whole exercise is intended to stall until I get one of those, so hush. I go up to my roof and slap together a bog standard cobblestone extruder. This is like beginner's guide to skyblock stuff. The problem then becomes, how am I going to actuate the pistons? I don't really have the materials for a redstone clock. It takes nether quartz, which I don't have. Vanilla mechanics are possible, but repeaters are still a little bit outside my price range, and redstone torch only timers are kind of a nightmare. And I end up doing something completely different, and just doom a villager to an eternal slip and slide and call it good. This just has to work, it doesn't have to be an art form. I slam my hobgoblin down at the end of the cobblestone sticks, leash it up, 
give it a pick, and tell it to get to work. It does. It is at this point that I realize my villager timer is too short for cobble to print, so I expand it a bit to make it tick slower, and move the goblin back one block so it stops breaking the wrong block of cobble. Just like that, cobble generator. It ain't fast, but it will work until the heat death of the universe, and the maintenance cost is free, which is the best kind of maintenance cost. You're probably wondering why I'm buying all of this Railcraft junk. Isn't Railcraft just the kind of meme mod that always gets thrown into mod packs so people can pretend that we still care about minecarts? The answer to those questions are in order, because I have a theory, and don't be mean, I want to play with my choo-choo trains. If you play this mod pack enough, you'll eventually begin to get a sense of what sort of technology the pack designers did and did not want you to try and use. Like, this isn't like a failing on their part, they just had a mental picture of how progression was supposed to work and limited time in the day, so they had to prioritize some things over others. To illustrate the point, Railcraft. This mod offers basically nothing to the player. Its whole thing in general is a kind of railroad roleplay and minecart stuff, which is already expensive, slow, and laggy in vanilla Minecraft. Greg techification really just made the problem worse. The quest book only really expects you to use this mod for its multi blocks, and there is basically no reason to use it for anything else. So, what do you get? When you combine mods that no one ever really uses, NPC trades that no one ever really sees, and a machine that lets you disassemble items into their base components, you get a whole lot of jank. And I do mean a whole lot. Take this signal block surveyor. I would be shocked if anyone in this pack ever used this thing as anything other than a paperweight. But with my new disassembler, I can now break it down into its component parts, which are a compass and something called a signal tuner. Ah, if I don't run out of steam. Hold on, please. Right, there we go. You can then break a signal tuner down into a frequency transmitter and a receiver circuit, whatever those are. I wonder what those decompose into. Well, one of them breaks down into an LV tier circuit and some silver cable, which is very useful, and the other one doesn't break down into anything. If nothing else, this means that I can now purchase an LV circuit and an ingot of silver from villagers for about seven-ish emeralds and a minute of my time, which is a pretty fantastic deal at this stage of the game. Normally, of course, there would be no reason to do any of this. This sort of thing is only useful if you have a mountain of spare emeralds, no way of producing resources or circuits the normal way, and an enormous glut of free time. Well, guess what? I have a mountain of emeralds, am living in the middle of the void, and have about half an hour till my XP berries finish growing. Let's see how far I can take this. So. I might be onto something here. Reinforced junction tracks break down into four steel screws each. Once you do the math on the trade conversion, that is a slow but super reliable way of getting about two steel ingots per emerald if you have the processing capacity. And I definitely have the processing capacity. My musings are temporarily interrupted by the XP harvest. I must do my duty. So, coming back to the railcraft question, with this new tech in mind, what do I want to try and milk out of it? I can only deconstruct up to LV, which is 32 EU per tick for those of you reading the recipes in the video, and disassemblers will only return the lowest tier version of the recipe to try and prevent exploits, but there are a couple of decent options I could try and swing for. The best possible one I could find were Y tracks, they cost four gears each to make, and depending on the variant, those gears could either be steel or copper. Truthfully though, the most useful resources I could get are the circuits. They're where most of my copper is going anyway, and I have plenty of other options for steel. I do, of course, want more villagers. 
Unfortunately, I'm out of arrows. To resolve this problem, I quickly hammer through the arrow duplication research in Thomcraft. This lets me turn basically any random weapon-like thing that has Tillum in it into more arrows. It also teaches me how to duplicate redstone and snowballs, which is nice, I guess. Wooden swords only give one arrow in return, but that isn't a problem. I have mountains of wood. Hold please. And in no time at all, I am cookied up and ready to go. I think that instead of just stacking another massive water pit, I'm going to go with another stacked honeycomb design like my earlier attempt. I can fit two villagers per honeycomb slot before they start dying from cram damage, and now that I can reliably move them, that will be a lot easier and more stable to set up than this monstrosity. That project, however, we'll have to wait until the next episode. As always, thank you for watching. YouTube doobly-doos are down below if you are inclined to that sort of thing. It may not seem like much on your side, but it does make a huge difference, especially for smaller channels like this one, and I hope you enjoyed.